Hey guys, welcome back. So, yeah, lockdown. So I've been playing a lot of games lately and I thought I'd just put up a video, talk about the games I've been playing because as I say, I've played a few. So I've got a couple of PlayStation 1 games and a couple of PS4 games that I've been playing. I've been starting to slowly catch up on the PS4 because I'm so far behind. I've got a massive backlog to get into. So yeah, it's a case of just getting them when I can now because uh, some of the prices are getting a bit much as well, unfortunately. So I've got to wait for them to drop. But I managed to get three games recently that I've played and I've been really enjoying during the lockdown. So yeah, but before we start, I just want to say a big thanks to Dana as well, Dana's to 83. Uh, he had on his lockdown stream last night. So thanks to anybody who watched that stream. It was me and Gashead on there. Uh, it was really, really fun. I really enjoyed doing that. And I'm glad I, I went for it. So thank you very much, Dana, for asking me to come on to your stream, mate. And if you haven't seen it, guys, and you want to watch it, there's a link down in the description to Dana's channel. So go and check it out. Right, so I'll do the PS1 games first of all. Bit of lubrication. Okay, so PS1 wise, what I've been doing, instead of like doing uh, collecting for PS1, I literally just buy a game, play it all the way through, put it on the shelf, buy another one. So I've been trying to get games that aren't arcade games. So I've been avoiding like the Ridge Racers and uh, the simple games for the time being, and like the Dooms. I mean, Dooms a little bit more in depth, but not so much. So I've, I've completed so far, I've completed the two Bond games, Tomorrow Never Dies, and The World Is Not Enough, which I've talked about previously. I absolutely love those, they were fantastic. And I, what else have I got? I did, I've been dabbling with Tony Hawk's too, I haven't completed it because I've done it many times, so I don't need to do that. I can't, what's the other game I got? Uh, it is. Oh yeah, that's right. I picked up Die Hard Trilogy, didn't I? And I managed to just get through Die Hard 2, which is the one that I only, I only want to play really. I got through it the same day I bought it, which was amazed by I completed it the first time, which is pretty impressive for me. I mean, I'm not using a light gun, I'm just using the D-pad, so, you know, it's not exactly easy. <laughs> so yeah, so I picked up two more games since, oh, I don't know when I did my last pickups now, it's gotta be in a month, it, or something. So I've done a couple of live streams since, so it's been a while. So I picked up two games. I think, I, I know I did mention in one video that I picked this up, so I don't remember if I actually talked about my experience with it, but anyway. So the first game I picked up, Medal of Honor, absolute classic first person shooter from 1999 I believe, uh, DreamWorks Spielberg's company. There's a game that I had in the when it came out back then, uh, one of those, as I said before, I used to pirate a lot back then, so it was a case of, got a list, went down the list, thought what the hell is Medal of Honor? I had no idea because I wasn't really reading magazines back then, because I was, in 99 I would have been 22? So yeah, so I was more interested in getting drunk to be quite honest with you. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was uh, just going through the list, picking up games. Saw Medal of Honor, I thought I'll give it a try. Got the American copy and I absolutely loved it at the time. And I've got to be honest, it holds up really well. A lot of it's going to be nostalgia of course, but I think it's brilliant, it's really fun. I still like the way that they do the, um, the they're not cut scenes, they're more text based. And they lay out the story so they'll give you the mission briefing. But then you also get some World War II footage for other video clips for each chapter which is really nicely done. Uh, the level design is really fun. The, 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 I was really surprised actually, because I didn't realize it's been that long since I played the game. It's actually a twin stick shooter. So like modern games, you can use the right stick to look around and the left stick to go forward, backwards and strafe left and right, which is an absolute godsend when playing these old 3D games. You can't iron sight, you can't aim down the sight of the gun. You have to hold a button and it puts a, 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 um, a cross on the screen like a reticle. And so you just have to aim that and shoot if you want to. And it is advisable because you can shoot from the hip, but to be quite honest, it doesn't always do you well to do that. You tend to get killed. So, yeah, it's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it's all right. Other times it's better to just aim. So I tend to do that quite a lot. But yeah, I really enjoyed it a lot. The only time I got stuck was there was one bit where you've got to go through, I remember right, you're going through a forest. And at the end of the forest, there's a plane that's being guarded by a guy with an MG42. And he kept killing me, the bastard and I couldn't work out what to do. I got it in the end, because you can either go direct through the bushes or you can take a, a, a diversion to the left where you go under a tunnel. I tried that and I was gonna snipe the guy from the left, but he shot me in the face. So I tried it again a couple of days later and I managed to hide behind the plane. He shot the plane and blew the plane up, which is what you've got to do for the mission, which was great. And then I just basically just chucked a load of potato mashers at him and got him. So that worked out well. Uh, but it's a really great game because it takes me back to those old school World War II first person shooters. And the, the music and the sound effects and the, the atmospherics of the dogs barking in the background and the crickets is absolutely incredible. 
the good thing about PlayStation 1 being CD sound, and it just shows the difference, you know, back when Nintendo was saying old cartridges are okay, we can continue with those for the N64. Not really, they were not a patch on CD. CD was so much better. And I was really quite impressed with the game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I love things like when you shoot the Germans and they hop around or they die and they go down and shoot following the gun off. It's just it's just classic action movie stuff. So yeah, really enjoyed it. I was quite surprised how well it holds up. So I'm really glad I bought that. And you know, there you go. So Medal of Honor has been a bit of a checkered um, history with the game, doesn't it? But I still feel that the ones that I did in the 128 bit era, when I did uh, Frontline, Rising Sun, European Assault, probably the weakest ones in the series. European Assault is my favourite of the three, but I think those, if you look at the PlayStation 1 games and then the ones that we got on 360 PS3, those ones in the middle really kind of let the Medal of Honor series down, which is why Call of Duty decided to destroy it. And of course, some of the Medal of Honor guys. The developers split off and created Infinity Ward and made Call of Duty. So the next game I picked up, which is going to be pretty obvious, but I picked up Medal of Honor Underground. I wanted to get this for one good reason. I've never completed it. Basically, I don't know what happened back in the day, but I remember there's a bit with some tanks, which is very early on now I've played the game. I found out it's a couple of levels in, I think, and you have to destroy these tanks. And I couldn't do it back in the day. There's two tanks, and I couldn't work out what I was doing wrong. And I played it this time, it's really easy, you just get your bazooka and blow them up. I don't know why I, had, I struggled with that game at that time, but yeah, I'm glad I managed to get through it because I've really, really enjoyed Medal of Honor Underground. It's a story of a French resistance fighter called Manon, and you have to go through the missions as per usual. You go to North Africa, which is really nice. You go around the world doing your global missions. You get the uh, same as the first game, you've got some sneaking missions. In the first game, you just have papers, so the Germans are coming out and asking you papers, and you show me papers, they let you through. In this one, you've got papers, but you're also undercover in tombs, and you're, you're supposed to be a photographer. And it's really funny because you show the papers, and they go, they go, they accept the papers, they go, oh, that's fine. And then, and then you, you pull the camera out, and the Nazis pose, and it's the most weird thing, considering how evil they are, to see them doing these, these weird little poses. It was quite strange, and you take the photograph, and then they, they move on. I thought really enjoyed the game, I thought it was really fun. I love the storyline that they put in. And the level design, again, it was just as good as the first game. And I like the fact that we had a completely different character. In the first game, you play a character called Jimmy Patterson. In this one, you've got a woman called Manon, as I say, is a French resistance fighter. The thing that annoyed me about the game is I've gotten to the end of the actual main story. I finished Manon's story. And for some random reason, you've got zombie Nazis at the end. And there's a couple of levels of zombie Nazis where they brought Jimmy Patterson back in. And I was like, why have they done that? It's like, why couldn't... It doesn't make sense to me. If it was DLC now, it would make sense. But back then, it was like, why didn't you just end the story there? You had this perfect story of this character and this French resistance movement. And then you just decided, ah, oh, we'll just throw some Nazis in at the end, some zombie Nazis and dogs, and we'll just put Jimmy Patterson in because, you know, you can't let a woman have a whole story. Quite bizarre. I don't really understand what they were thinking. And to be honest, the Nazi zombie bit is really hard. I've done the first one, the first mission. I can't do the second one. I've tried many times. Because you get Nazi zombies, you get dogs, uh, you get like dog people, like bi bipedal dogs, which is bizarre, and you get soldiers, um, not soldiers, like um, knights of the realm, basically, like um, no, like King Arthur. So they come at you in the full armor, and they're like basically possessed, and all you got to do is just shoot them in the head. But they're in the way, and you're shooting at them, and you're trying to get them in the head and not hit the shield because it doesn't do anything, and you've got the zombie Nazi in the back trying to kill you with a machine gun, and once you kill the Nazi zombie, they fall down and they explode. So you have to make sure you're not in the way. So it's an absolute nightmare and a ball ache, and it's really unnecessary because the rest of the, the actual game, the proper storyline, is so well crafted, and the level design is brilliant. I so say you've got all the sneaking over the cameras, you've got the gunplay. Uh, it's, it's a really, really fun game, and to me, those are two, probably the two best Medal of Honor games. You know, I love the 360 PS3 games, but they're not World War II. They're completely different, and of course, Medal of Honor Airborne, which is an absolute masterpiece. But yeah, I'd say that I'd say the top three for me are Medal of Honor, Medal of Honor Underground, and, and Airborne. And if I was pushed, I'd put European Assault in there if we're talking World War II. But yeah, really impressed. So definitely recommend them both if you've not played them. So onto the PS4 stuff. So I've got three games I've been playing. Um, so as I say, I've got a lot to catch up on. There's like a list of games that I want to get, and then there's games I don't even know about yet. I've got to check and find out what's available because I'm so far behind on PS4, I've been playing a lot more retro stuff. So I wanted to just start picking up the games 
now that it's starting to get a little cheaper towards the PS5 era, so I can actually play these games. I will say before I start that, I really want to play Days Gone, Detroit, and I want to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now Detroit is about 15 to 18 quid. Days Gone's like 30 quid, which is a bit of a shame, but it'll come down. But Medal of Honor, um, Medal of Honor Call of Duty, on the brain, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is ridiculous. I've seen people asking 45, 50, 60, I even saw one dickhead asking for 150 for a sealed copy. I was like, mate, it's Call of Duty, there's shitloads of them. I don't know what's going on with that game, I don't know what it is. I saw one today, a used copy in mint condition, which was 35. But I got so much money just for that game. I mean, it's only going to, I assume, it'll only be like a six to eight hour campaign. And I know I'm going to enjoy it, and I don't do multiplayer, I only play campaign. So I'm not paying big money for a game like that. I'd rather wait. But it's just frustrating because that's the one I wanted to play next. I was really looking forward to playing that because it looks so good, but hey. Anyway, I have played some great games. So first one I played, I'm way behind the curve on this. I think it came out in 2018 and it's Spider-Man from Insomniac. Great game. Really, really enjoyed this a lot. I mean, there's been a lot of hype behind this game. And all I've ever seen is positivity behind Spider-Man. But I will say, when I first put the game on, I found it incredibly hard. I was trying, I'm, I'm a pretty experienced game. I've been gaming for over 30 years. And you know, I've gone through the generations and I've learned. Now, I've never been an absolutely amazing gamer. I usually play games on the, the, the middle setting, like where it starts, the default. I don't generally play games on the harder settings because I don't see the, the need to do that for me. I'm not about setting myself challenges. I want to enjoy the story and play through the game. You know, the only time I've ever done that really was like Medal of Honor Airborne, I've put the difficulty up to max because it made a game more playable. And the Uncharted games, I've completed those on the hardest setting and one and two i got right to the i think no i got about halfway through the first one and right to the end of the second one on crushing the difficulty which is really hard and about halfway through number three it's very hard to do that so normally i just plan the default center setting spider-man kicked my ass i was trying to do the fights at the beginning i just i just kept dying over and over and over and over and over and i thought this is ridiculous how am i supposed to play this bloody game i just can't even get through a simple fight with like four guys so I had to knock the difficulty down, and I knock it down to Amazing Spider-Man, which I think is like the lowest difficulty, which I thought, oh, I don't know if this is going to be a good idea, because then the, the AI will be really dumb, they won't put up a fight, and it'll be boring. As it happens, no, they still put up a fight, they still fight back, they don't just stand there and get hit, which was really good, but at least I could actually get through the combat and not get my ass handed to me every five minutes. So once I got that in play, the actual storyline I thought was really good, really fun. I like the fact uh, and I've just put a spoiler alert in case anybody hasn't played it yet but they bring Miles Morales into it which I thought was really cool and I like the fact that you get to play as Peter Parker, Miles Morales and you get to play as MJ as well so you get to mix up the gameplay so you, with Miles and MJ there's more stealth and just sneaking around areas to try and find information whereas with Peter you're swinging through the city and you're doing the missions uh, and you're taking down um, Wilson Fisk and the other guy who's now I can't remember the Asian bloke uh, I can't remember what the character's name is who like, leads the band of bad guys. But uh, the story was really good. I thought the character models were a bit odd. The character model faces didn't look quite right to me, and I felt like Peter's voice didn't go with the face. It didn't, it, when, when you hear him, when he's swinging through the streets of Spider-Man, and he's masked up, the voice, they, the, the actor, whoever the actor is, his voice just didn't, I don't know if it's the same actor doing both parts or what it is, but it just didn't match to me with what I was seeing on screen with the cutscenes. But you know, it's a minor thing, it doesn't really matter. I thought the mechanics of swinging were really cool. I love that. It's really simple as well, the way they, they set it up with the triggers and you can just you know, flow through the city and you can reach the peak of an arc of a swing and then jump and you'll spin and do acrobatics and then you swing off another building or you hit a building, run up the building, over the building, jumping over stuff. The acrobatics were fantastic. It was, I thought the controls were really, really well thought out. And the combat as well, once you get to grips with the combat and you've got it at a level where you can actually win a fight, the combat's great fun. I love being out like the guys with the shields where you can just slip under the legs, come up behind them, smack them in the back of the head, or you can foam up in the air and beat them down, and you can throw webs and you get web bombs, and it's, it's, it's such a fun game, and I haven't had a game that's been fun for a long time. Once you get a difficulty level to where you can play the game, you'll really enjoy this game, it's so much fun. The only thing I will say is I did think it was a little bit short, it seemed to, the campaign seemed to be over pretty quickly. I mean, I did play it quite a lot the one day, I think for about four hours or something, so probably why I probably went through a lot of the storyline because um, I didn't do any of the side missions and things and this is where it went wrong for me because I didn't know about the side missions and what they would do to the game because I usually do all that stuff after I finished an open world game and so I completed the game I had some struggles with some of the boss fights like the the rhino and um is it not shocker was it I can't 
I can't remember who it was, whoever it was with Rhino anyway. Pain in the ass. Trying to fight two bosses at the same time is a nightmare. I think it's better when you've got one boss to fight because it becomes quite erratic because you're trying to concentrate. Like, you've got Rhino, you've got to drop stuff on him. So I'm trying to figure out where he is, look where he is. Look where the other guy is as well so he doesn't shoot me with the electric and piss me off. And I'm trying to beat him up and I'm trying to pull down craters on top of Rhino as Rhino runs at me and, it, and I'm swinging everywhere and I'm losing track of what's going on. And it was like, Jesus, this is too much. If they just had the one fight with Rhino or the other guy, I'd have been fine. But trying to concentrate on both is an absolute nightmare. Maybe it's an age thing, I don't know. And the last the last battle as well with Doc Ock, I, that drove me insane. I kept trying to do it and I was getting really st stressed because especially at the end of the fight when he's blowing stuff up and climbing up the tower and I'm swinging around and I'm going off the building by mistake because the electric flies the floor and I'm, I'm like, what the hell's going on? And I couldn't work out what I was doing wrong and eventually I killed him anyway. But anyway, it turns out afterwards, I didn't realise, <laughs> my own fault, Adam Shock 16 pointed out that apparently if you do the side missions, it gives you upgrades and you can upgrade your suit, which makes it a lot easier because you become a more powerful Spider-Man and therefore the fights are not so tough. I didn't know that and I just played through one suit, so that's it was my own fault. Probably didn't pay attention to what it was telling me, I was probably skipping stuff and going, yeah, whatever, I just want to enjoy the storyline. But that's a minor thing, besides that, I really enjoyed the combat once I got the hang of it. I love the storyline. I thought the, uh, the actual swinging around is so much fun. At the moment, I'm just sort of swinging around the city and just taking on crime and taking out the soldiers that are uh, monopolising the city. It's great fun. I love that. And you just swing it and you hear the radio and you hear like, there's a crime committed. And you click the, click the stick and it highlights it. And you swing over there and you drop down. And you can throw webs around and tie people up and beat them down. Fantastic. Really fun. So I'm actually hoping that there is going to be a Spider-Man 2. Apparently, there's, there's a good chance of it on the PS5. So when I eventually buy a PS5 in a couple of years' time, I think that's going to be a really fun game. Right, next one. Next one's a VR game. And it's a game I've wanted to play ever since I got my VR headset. And it didn't disappoint at all. I played the demo to death when I got my VR headset last year. So I was, I was dying to get this game. And I finally got someone listed for a really low price. So I grabbed it. And it's blood and truth. This game is awesome. Very, very short mind, which was a bit of a disappointment. It seems to be over very quickly. I think it's about six hours or something. It's not very long. It just zips by. But my God, it's fantastic. It's so much fun. If you don't know, it's a gangster thing, a London gangster story, starring Colin Salmon as a great actor. And you play a, like a, I can't remember if he's a CIA agent or not, but basically he's been burned and there's, there's a whole corruption story and his family's involved in crime. And, you know, at uh, the beginning, your mother's kidnapped. You have to try and find your mother in London. But the VR is so cool in this game. It's absolutely amazing. The immersive experience. The thing with VR is if you've not used VR and you're watching the videos on YouTube, they give you no concept whatsoever of why VR is so great. Because I didn't. When, before I got a VR headset, I was like, I don't get it. I, I don't see how that's real VR. You're not walking around the room. I don't. You're just sitting there moving your head around. I don't get what's going to be so fun about it. And then when you put the headset on, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. It makes sense. You know, and it's a difficult thing to show people unless they try it. But Blood and Truth is so much fun. Just the basics of like picking up the guns, you got the moves, and you pick up the gun and the, the clip, and you put the clip in the gun, and then you move your hand over here and it holds the end of the battle on a machine gun or on a handgun, you'll hold, hold the grip and you feel like you're really shooting a gun. It's incredible the feeling of it. And the, 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 the thing that I love the most is the interactions, like when you're climbing buildings, like scaffolding, or you're climbing up a ladder, and you've got the moves and you're going like this one at a time. It's, it's just incredible, it really sucks you in. Your brain still knows you're playing a video game, but for a fraction of time, you just sort of forget and you get so lost in this world. And it feels, it doesn't, I wouldn't say real, but it's close. If, if, it's a really bizarre feeling. And you get to like pick locks and you're like doing this and you're twisting it and you get like a screwdriver to unlock a uh, little, there's like, um, I can't remember, there's like cases with fuses in you have to pull out and there's two screws. And you get a screwdriver and you put them in, you get the move and you turn the move like a screwdriver and it's the most, effective thing to do everything's so simple in this game but it's all really effective and really immersive uh, and the actual game's great as well it's got a really fun storyline great characters incredible level design i mean the, the one bit at the beginning the casino oh my god i felt like an absolute don playing that because it's, it's the weirdest experience you're going through it it's sort of like a, a modern day light gun game you're on rails and you're going through there's people popping out and I'm like, with two handguns, and I'm like popping one guy, and I pop a guy in the head, and the other guy comes up behind, I'm shooting two in the chest, and I'm spinning around, and I'm shooting people, and I'm reloading. And when it flows, and you get it right, oh man, it is the best experience. I absolutely love it. I mean, the first time I played the demo, 
and it's right at the beginning of the game, the first part of the game, and you, you land in this desert area, and you're looking around with a headset like that, and there's like planes flying over the top and blowing stuff up, and there's all this detail and graphics. It's incredible. It's, it's just like the evolution of the light gun genre. If you've not tried VR, and you can get the opportunity to do so, I recommend it, because it's absolutely incredible. And you play a game like that, it'll blow your mind. It's really, really fun. So I'm really hoping to make a sequel, because the game ended pretty quickly, and it left me wanting more. I was like, oh, I can't believe the story's going to end there. So I was just dying to see what happens next. It's fantastic. And the last game I got to show you is one I picked up a couple of weeks back, and that's Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So I've been dying to play this. Big fan of the 2013 reboot. I've played it many times across many platforms. I've played it on 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4. Completed it ridiculous amounts of times. I absolutely adore that game. I wasn't a big fan of Rise. I thought Rise was good, but not great. It felt, to me, it was like, it starts really strong and then it just gets quite boring in the middle and then I can't bother to finish it again. So I've only ever completed it once. Other than that, I've tried to play it multiple times, but as I say, I always get bored and just turn it off. And there's too much exploration. It's not about the action like the first game is. The first game, you get a couple of tombs and things, but mostly it's about blowing people's faces off and running around and shooting everyone. And it's great fun. I love that game to bits. But Rise just doesn't do it for me. I will try and play it again at some point. I need to pick up the 2013 game and Rise. I've got it on PS3, but you know, I want the proper version, the definitive edition. So I wanted to try Shadow to see what it was like because I was hearing conflicting things about whether it was any good. And I've been interested, obviously, since it came out because I'm a fan of the series. Uh, I, I thought it was decent. It was good. Um, graphically, it's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful world. It's definitely closer to the first game than the second game. But again, unfortunately... When you're playing the game, you find out there's hardly any action in it. So then it starts to lean more towards Rise. And it really is heavy on the uh, puzzles and the exploration. And you literally get like a couple of minutes of gunplay. There's hardly, it's the bizarrest thing. Because I thought I was going to be shooting people all over the place. Because when I started the game, it felt like the first game. And I thought, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to be running and gunning. And I'm going to have fun. I'm going to be crawling across the floor and hiding behind walls. No, not at all. And you know, most of the time you interact with the enemies, they want you to stealth kill, which drove me nuts because it made no bloody sense. There was one area quite far into the game. There's a load of guys in a field and it's like, you've got to stealth kill them all like Rambo with, one, with your knife. And I'm like, hold on. If there's five guys, they've all got machine guns. I slit the first bloke's throat. He drops his machine gun. I pick his machine gun up and I shoot the rest of them. But no, the machine gun disappears because that had happened in real life. And yet you're forced to try and kill them all. And I was like, this is bullshit. So, you know, in the end, so I just deft it, I just pulled my gun out, and I, I had a gun anyway, so I just shot them all. I thought, I'm not being forced to stealth kill this, like, it's bullshit, there's no need to do it. You know, it's completely pointless. So I hate being forced to stealth I hate I hate that with modern games in general, when people keep forcing genres into a game, it's like, just make the game you want to make. Don't feel that you have to have a stealth section, you have to have a puzzle section, you have to have this, you have to have that. It's like, no, just make a game that you want to make in one genre, because it drives me bloody nuts. I hate being forced to stealth. I can't, I'm crap at stealth anyway. I, it's the one thing that does my nut in the most in games. But you know, Uncharted, they put stealth in it and it was done the right way because it's very simple and there's not a lot of it and you can get through it quite easily. So it doesn't irritate you, but this irritated me. Um, besides that, I thought the storyline was okay. Not a patch on the first. The characters aren't as interesting as the first game. Uh, you still got Jonah, which is cool. But yeah, it was just an, it was not the right game. It was good, it was fun, I got through it. Uh, it's beautiful to look at, but quite frankly, if you're going to play a Tomb Raider game, a modern Tomb Raider, and you're like me, and you're not asked about puzzling and a bloody exploration and all these cobblers, you just want to shoot some people, play the first one. The 2013 game is so superior to these other two. You know, I mean, this this game, Shadow, I, mean, I, I don't know how many puzzles they did at the beginning, but it seemed like at the beginning of the game, every five minutes, they give me a new puzzle to solve, and I am not someone who can do puzzles. My brain does not like puzzles, and, I'm, and I get really stressed quickly when I can't work it out. And it's usually something not that difficult, but I get stressed out because I can't work it out. And then when I do work it out, I'm like, oh, is that it? <laughs> so yeah, I don't like it at all. I'd rather they just made a standard Tomb Raider 2013 style, full on action, decent story, reasonable characters. Because the characters weren't that bad in the first game, actually. I mean, there's a couple of cliches and stereotypes, but you know, other than that, the actual storyline was quite good, actually. I thought it was quite fun with the triangle and the you know, doing the documentary and all of that, it was, it was good. And it was a lot of fun playing through the game. I've played it multiple times. I will not be playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider multiple times, and I'll probably, when I get it, I'll try Rise one more time and that'll be it. But um, the first game, I'll just keep playing that for years because it's so much fun. 
But I'm glad I played it. I'm glad I tried it because I needed to experience it with myself just to find out if I liked it or not. So I don't know what I'm going to do next. Um, I'm going to have a look later on and see what games we have. Weirdly, I wanted to get Knack 2 because I've got Knack and I'm a big fan of the Knack games. And I've had Knack 2 before when it first came out. I had it years ago. Uh, I never managed to finish it. I got stuck quite far into the game, unfortunately. I couldn't work out what to do. So I wanted to get it back and it just seems like it's really hard to get there. There's hardly any copies around. I don't know what's going on. I've got one that I'm watching that's on auction. Um, but that seems to be going up in price. So does anybody know, has Knack 2 been pulled or something? Is it not available anymore? Really bizarre, I don't know what's going on there. So I want to play that. I might get Detroit, because Detroit's the cheapest at the moment, but I'm, I'm tempted to get Days Gone, because I, I really want to try that. And the other day I watched Champion 2D Rob doing his video, his PS4 video, and he was saying how much he likes Days Gone, and apparently they fixed a lot of the bugs in the game. There's still a couple, but it's not as bad as it used to be. And he said it was really fun, so... Yeah, I, 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 don't, I just don't know if the swarm of zombies is going to like stress me out a little bit, but I do want to play it. So I want to play that. Eventually, I'll play Modern Warfare from Bleeding Knocker. And then I've just got to go for all the other ones. There's, there's so many PS4 games. I'm trying not to buy games that I've owned from back in the day when the PS4 came out because I've played them to death already. I want to have new experiences, which is why I picked those for you. And there's also VR games I want to buy and all. So is it, I think it's Battlezone or something, the tank game. The, the demo of that is so cool. So I really want to play that full game. So there you go guys, that's the latest anyway, I just thought we'd let you know. I'm doing alright in the lockdown, if it's going cool. Please check out the, the stream I did with Gashead over on Dainster's channel last night, that was really fun. Description, link down below. And yeah, besides that, just wanted to talk about the games we've been playing really, so if I, if I get any more games I'll do another video and talk about those as well. Just hope you're all staying safe really, I hope you're all coping okay in this situation that we're in at the moment. It's not the best is it really, but you know, it could be worse I suppose. But as long as you're staying safe and you're happy and you're having fun and you know I think the best thing for us lot is we're getting to play our games we're getting through our backlogs now we're not just you know having loads of games that we haven't got around to so it's good fun all right guys thank you very much for watching I really appreciate it as always and I'll see you in the next one